24. Beware the After Effects Danger follows in the aftermath of a successful seduction. After emotions have reached a pitch, they often swing in the opposite direction, toward lassitude, distrust, disappointment. Beware of the long, drawn-out goodbye. Insecure, the victim will cling and claw, and both sides will suffer. If you are to part, make the sacrifice swift and sudden. If necessary, deliberately break the spell you've created. If you are to stay in a relationship, beware a flagging of energy, a creeping familiarity that will spoil the fantasy. If the game is to go on, a second seduction is required. Never let the other person take you for granted. Use absence, create pain and conflict to keep the seduced on tenterhooks. Disenchantment Seduction is a kind of spell, an enchantment. When you seduce, you are not quite your normal self. Your presence is heightened. You're playing more than one role. You're strategically concealing your tics and insecurities. You've deliberately created mystery and suspense to make the victim experience a real-life drama. Under your spell, the seduced gets to feel transported away from the world of work and responsibility. You will keep this going for as long as you want or can, heightening the tension, stirring the emotions, until the time finally comes to complete the seduction. After that, disenchantment almost inevitably sets in. The release of tension is followed by a letdown, of excitement, of energy, that can even materialize as a kind of disgust directed at you by your victim, even though what is happening is really a natural emotional course. It's as if a drug were wearing off, allowing the target to see you as you are and being disappointed by the flaws that are inevitably there. On your side, you too have probably tended to idealize your target somewhat, and once your desire is satisfied, you may see them as weak. After all, they've given in to you. You too may feel disappointed. Even in the best of circumstances, you are dealing now with the reality rather than the fantasy, and the flames will slowly die down unless you start up a second seduction. You may think that if the victim is to be sacrificed, none of this matters. But sometimes your effort to break off the relationship will inadvertently revive the spell for the other person, causing him or her to cling to you tenaciously. No. In either direction, sacrifice or the integration of the two of you into a couple, you must take disenchantment into account. There is an art to the post-seduction as well. Master the following tactics to avoid undesired after-effects. Fight against inertia. The sense that you are trying less hard is often enough to disenchant your victims. Reflecting back on what you did during the seduction, they will see you as manipulative. You wanted something then, and so you worked at it. But now, you are taking them for granted. After the first seduction is over, then show that it isn't really over, that you want to keep proving yourself, focusing your attention on them, luring them. This is often enough to keep them enchanted. Fight the tendency to let things settle into comfort and routine. Stir the pot, even if that means a return to inflicting pain and pulling back. Never rely on your physical charms. Even beauty loses its appeal with repeated exposure. Only strategy and effort will fight off inertia. Maintain mystery. Familiarity is the death of seduction. If the target knows everything about you, the relationship gains a level of comfort but loses the elements of fantasy and anxiety. Without anxiety and a touch of fear, the erotic tension is dissolved. Remember, reality is not seductive. Keep some dark corners in your character. Flout expectations. Use absences to fragment the clinging, possessive pull that allows familiarity to creep in. Maintain some mystery or be taken for granted. You will have only yourself to blame for what follows. Maintain lightness. Seduction is a game, not a matter of life and death. 
There will be a tendency in the post phase to take things more seriously and personally and to whine about behavior that doesn't please you. Fight this as much as possible, for it'll create exactly the effect you don't want. You can't control the other person by nagging and complaining. It'll make them defensive, exacerbating the problem. You'll have more control if you maintain the proper spirit. Your playfulness, the little ruses you employ to please and delight them, your indulgence of their faults will make your victims compliant and easy to handle. Never try to change your victims. Instead, induce them to follow your lead. Avoid the slow burnout. Often, one person becomes disenchanted but lacks the courage to make the break. Instead, he or she withdraws inside. As an absence, this psychological step back may inadvertently reignite the other person's desire and a frustrating cycle begins a pursuit and retreat. Everything unravels slowly. Once you feel disenchanted and know it's over, end it quickly, without apology. That would only insult the other person. A quick separation is often easier to get over. It's as if you had a problem being faithful, as opposed to your feeling that the seduced was no longer being desirable. Once you are truly disenchanted, there's no going back. So don't hang on out of false pity. It's more compassionate to make a clean break. If that seems inappropriate or too ugly, then deliberately disenchant the victim with anti-seductive behavior. To keep a person enchanted, you'll have to re-seduce them constantly, but you can allow a little familiarity to creep in. The target wants to feel that he or she is getting to know you. Too much mystery will create doubt. It'll also be tiring for you, who will have to sustain it. The point is not to remain completely unfamiliar, but rather on occasion to jolt victims out of their complacency, surprising them as you surprised them in the past. Do this right, and they will have the delightful feeling that they are constantly getting to know more about you, but never too much. This has been a Highbridge Audio presentation.